now. Okay, so I want to cover these four topics. Scarcity, opportunity cost, efficiency, and economic growth. Okay. So the first model we do is called the production possibilities model. Okay. After this, we'll do circular flow, then we'll do supply and demand, eventually we'll do aggregate supply and aggregate demand. So we'll learn lots of models of how the economy works in this course. This is the first one. This is called the production possibilities model. Economic models are meant to simplify the real world. Okay, the same way like physicists study gravity in a vacuum, it simplifies the real world, right? It removes a lot of variables. Okay? So do we. Okay? So in production possibilities, we, we imagine the world of two goods. So the two goods I've, I've chosen are sewing machines and corn, because often we choose a capital good, a sewing machine, which is a good can, which can be used to make other goods, right? A uh, sewing machine can be used to make textiles. And a consumer good, corn. Once you've eaten corn, it's gone. Can't help you to make anything else. Okay? So we have a, a, an economy or a world in which two goods are produced. Okay? What the axes tell us is how much this economy can produce of each good. So with this line here, we refer to this line as the PPC or PPF. They mean the same thing. The PPC, the production possibilities curve, or PPF, the production possibilities frontier. Okay, but they mean exactly the same thing. And what it indicates is the maximum amount of production or the maximum mix of sewing machines and corn that can be produced by this country or this economy, if all of its resources are utilized. Okay, so if any of the combinations represented by those curves is what the country is actually producing, it's producing the maximum amount of production. It's utilizing all of its resources. It's what we would say they're productively efficient. Okay, so that defines productive efficiency. It's a, it's a situation where all of a country's resources are utilized and it's producing as much as it possibly can. Now, most any country would like to consume more than that. Let's call this point A. But they can't. This economy can't produce goods at point A. Why? Yeah, they don't have enough resources. They don't have enough people, workers. They don't have enough machines, capital, or they don't have enough land, either land to grow food on or land resources like oil and trees and so forth and so on. Okay? And so they can only produce so much because they only have so much, so many resources with which to produce the things they want. In this case, sewing machines and corn. Okay? Now, it would be possible that in the future they could produce here, and I'll explain why later. But currently, this country can't produce it at. All right? It can produce at B. We would say that B is a point of productive efficiency. It's producing the maximum amount of output possible. If it were producing inside of that curve, it would be producing less of both corn and sewing machines than it could if it were if it were producing efficiently, if it were using all of its resources. Okay, if we're inside the curve here, we would say that this is a point of inefficiency and there must be some resources which aren't working. There must be some people sitting on the couch without a job. There must be some land which is not being used to grow food. There must be some uh, capital, some factories which are sitting idle doing nothing. Okay? In that case, we would say those resources are unemployed. Sometimes we would refer to an economy here as being in a recession or a depression or something like that. Okay? 
So here, unemployed resources. Here, full employment, productive efficiency. Here, unattainable, currently. Okay? Now, when you see a production possibilities graph, typically you will either see a straight line curve for the production, production possibilities curve or a curve which is bowed out. Okay? The straight line curve represents constant opportunity costs, and the bowed out curve represents increasing opportunity costs. Okay? Let me explain. Okay? Here, so an opportunity cost is what you give up of one good to get more of another. Okay? So if you want more corn, you have to give up sewing machines, and let me explain why. Okay? Imagine in this country, all they produce currently is sewing machines. It must mean then that they're using all of their resources to produce sewing, sewing machines. Might be something like 10 sewing machines and zero bushels of corn, okay? If suddenly there's a demand for corn, people are willing to pay something for corn, some businessmen, businesswomen, are going to move into the production of corn and out of the production of sewing machines, right? In order to produce corn, some people who are currently working in factories making sewing machines are going to have to move to the farm, right? Some of the land which is currently used for the factories that produce sewing machines will have to be made into farmland, right? And some of the uh, some of the machinery, sorry, that's used to make sewing machines will have to be reallocated into the production of corn, all right? Okay, so what happens is as you produce more corn, you get more resources in corn, but less resources in sewing machines. So corn production goes up, but the production of sewing machines has to go down. Okay, so here, to, produce, to go from zero sewing machines to one sewing machine, okay, you go from here in terms of uh, I'm sorry, from zero bushels of corn to one bushel of corn, you go from here in terms of sewing machine production to here in terms of sewing machine production. So this is your opportunity cost, whatever it is, whatever the number is. Okay? Any questions about opportunity cost? Now you can see for, the, for going from the zero to the first for one unit of production, the opportunity cost here is about the same as the opportunity cost for one unit of production when you go from five to six here, okay? Those are about equal, or the, in, in, in this case, they should be exactly equal, okay? Okay, so you have what are called constant opportunity costs. As you, even as you increase corn production, the opportunity cost is always the same, okay? Now, over here, you can see something different. As you go from one to two, the opportunity cost in terms of sewing machines is this much. But as you go from five to six, the same amount of increase in corn, one bushel, you have a much bigger cost, a much larger cost in terms of sewing machines. And so the opportunity costs are increasing. Okay? The opportunity costs here are increasing. So why? So the, more, the, more, the interesting question is why? Okay, we would expect that the real world looks more like this than like this. So let's imagine this world, right? Currently, everyone's making sewing machines. Every single worker is making sewing machines. Even workers who grew up on farms, right? Whose skill set is basically to grow corn. But because we're only making sewing machines, they're working in the factory. Okay? Now imagine, now imagine the demand for corn rises, and we begin producing some corn. Some farms begin to produce some corn. Who are going to be the first workers to leave the factory? The farmers, right? They'll be the first ones hired by the farms, and the first ones let go by the factories. 
because they're not very good at making sewing machines, but they're really good at making corn. And the same would be the case for the land, right? The first land, which would be purchased by new farmers, would be very fertile farmland, right? The last farmland that would be purchased is the infertile land, right? Um, and the same thing would go for machinery, right? Machinery, which is best suited for farming, would be purchased by farmers and would flow out of the sewing machine industry. The, that, the, that machinery, which is really good for making sewing machines, would remain in the sewing machine industry, okay? So basically, the idea is that the best resources for corn will be the ones that flow into corn out of sewing machines first, meaning Okay? When farmers go into corn, we get lots of corn production, but we don't lose much in terms of sewing machines. So the gain relative to the loss is small. It's a small opportunity cost. As we increase production of corn, the resources that are going into corn are relatively better at producing sewing machines than they are at producing corn and therefore we're losing lots of sewing machine production at, um, as we gain very little in terms of corn. And so the opportunity cost is much greater as we move to the right along this horizontal axis or as we increase production of corn, thus increasing opportunity costs, okay? And the bowed out shape of this curve. Okay. Now, Who's timing me? I am. Okay. I got three minutes. Perfect. Okay. Uh, a couple of other things here. Okay. Just like on this graph, on, on, on this graph, A here is unattainable, B is productively efficient, and C is inefficient. We have unemployed resources. Okay? Now, B is productively efficient because we're produ producing as much as we possibly can. But D is also productively efficient because we're producing as much as we possibly can. As is, let's not go there. As is E. Any point, so there are multiple points of productive efficiency. Any point on that curve is productively efficient. However, there is only one point of allocative efficiency where resources are allocated in a way that goods, the mix of goods produced is the, produces the greatest possible happiness and satisfaction in society. In economics term, terms, we would say surplus. Okay? Producers making great profits, consumers really enjoying the goods that they're consuming. Now, you could have a society where only corn was produced. Were people like that? No, because you're gonna want some sewing machines. In this case, it would be better to have the cars up here. You can imagine a world where people would want both cars and corn, right? But not just corn. Some cars, some corn, right? Okay? So some mix of the two is gonna create the greatest possible amount of happiness and well welfare is probably the best term here. Welfare in society. That's going to be, obviously, we want the most amount of production we can get, the most amount of stuff. The more stuff we have, the happier we are, right? So that point of allocative efficiency is, must, by definition, also be one of the points of productive efficiency. So it must be on the curve, but can only be one point on the curve. It's going to be different for different countries, right? A country like the United States, it might be at E. Because Americans like what? Corn. A country, a country like Japan might be more up here like B or D. Because they don't like corn quite as much. Now if we change this to rice, things might change. Okay, you understand the, you understand the idea? Okay. Um, last but not least, economic growth. Okay. Uh, Economic growth is represented in production possibilities by an increase a shift to the right of the production possibilities frontier, like this. That's how you represent it. 
Okay. Um, what causes economic growth? Three things. One, an increase in the amount of resources available to or that uh, exist in the society. A baby boom. All right, you have a baby boom. Eventually, you have more workers. Outward shift of the. Um, we're out of time. Fifteen. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, <laughs> told you. Um, uh, you have a baby boom. You have more workers, right? You have you make an oil discovery. You have more land resources. Okay. You attack another country and take its uh, take its coal reserves, right? You have more uh, you have more coal resources. Okay. You get an outward shift of the of the curve. Number two, an improvement in the quality of the existing resources. The classic example of this is education. You educate your workers, they have greater skills. Greater skills, they're more productive. The classic example of this, a great example of this, is Singapore. Okay, Singapore in the 1960s invested in education and other things too. Okay, and 30, 40 years later has a much more highly educated workforce than most of the other countries in the region. 30, 40 years ago, it was just about as poor as everyone else in this region. And today it's not even close. Part of that has to do with the investment that was made in improving the quality of Singaporean workers in terms of skills. Third, the amount of technology available to businesses. So if businesses have more technology available to them or better technologies are invented, then we would see an outward shift of the production possibilities frontier. Think the microchip. Think the assembly line. Okay? So economic growth is caused for, by, for, by three things. Uh, amount of resources increase, uh, quality of resources increases, and the amount of technology available to businesses increases. Wrap.